Hi, I'm Anthony Gosh, a consultant spinal neurosurgeon and founder of the Spine MDT. And in this video, I'm going to talk about spinal decompression. Now, this is a phrase thrown around by all the different types of healthcare professionals who treat spine disease, and therefore it can have a different meaning depending on who is using it, and that can cause some confusion. Now, from a surgeon's perspective, it's a commonly used term to describe any operation that involves taking the pressure off trapped nerves in the spine. But we commonly use this term in the context of spinal stenosis. So let's have a quick look at this diagram here to try and understand the anatomy so that I can explain it. Um, the spine is made up of a stack of bones called vertebrae. Uh, it starts here at the top, just at the, under the underside of the skull, making its way all the way down to the pelvis. You've got five bones in the lumbar region, the lower back, 12 bones in the thoracic region, sort of in the chest or rib cage area, and then seven in the neck. And if we zoom in, each bone, each vertebra is a cylindrical block of bone with an arch at the back of it. That creates a tunnel in the back through which all the nerves run through this yellow area here. And then each bone is separated by these cushions here called discs. Now in stenosis, a combination of a disc bulging out slightly, as well as this ligament here, this stuff here, uh, between the arches of bone at the back, thickening up and buckling and bulging inwards, as well as some of the joints at the side of the spine thickening up. A combination of all those three things can cause narrowing of this spinal canal and entrapment of the nerves that you can see here and here. And that's what stenosis is. Um, and it typically causes pain that shoots down the legs, uh, that gets worse when you walk and kind of eases up when you stop and rest. And the procedures... Uh, to treat it, uh, come under the umbrella term of spinal decompression, where you just remove any of the stuff that's compressing the nerves. So here we have um, a port that goes into the skin of the back here. This is the back, this is the front, and this is the, the spine here. This is a cross section through it. Um, this just moves all the muscular tissue out the way. Um, the common procedure I do it, that I still call a decompression, is just take a small window of this bone away and then remove any sort of any disc material possibly, undercut some of this overgrown facet joint and remove that thickened ligament to create nice wide space around this area. So it's an umbrella term that encompasses a couple of different procedures, some you, which you may have heard of. Uh, one is a lumbar laminectomy. Uh, another is a minimally invasive lumbar decompression, which is what I described here in this picture. Um, and I'll put some links below on other videos I've done on those procedures. So a laminectomy essentially is when you remove the whole of this arch at the back of the spine. But as mentioned, I do what is called a minimally invasive decompression, where I just make a tiny window in that arch and then under the microscope microscope, um, I just remove whatever whatever is compressing the nerves. Now therapists, uh, physiotherapists, chiropractors, osteopaths may use this term to describe either a range of exercises or stretches that they can teach you or some manipulations, manual therapy adjustments or even devices like this one where you're strapped uh, onto this special table and some traction is applied. This is a device that applies traction, stretching the spine apart, but there are also exercises you can do that can do the same sort of thing, but probably to less to lesser degree. Let's explain it with this diagram here, where we've this time flipped the spine around. So this is the front and this is the back. These are the vertebral bodies. And in between we have the discs. And this diagram just shows all the different things that can go on um, within the discs. These are the soft tissues that act as cushions between the bones. They can wear and tear at what we call degenerative disc, and that's a fairly normal finding even in people who've never experienced back pain or back problems. A disc can bulge or herniate, so that means you know more of it actually pokes out, starts to pinch nerves. Now, instead of surgery, there are in some scenarios, there are manipulations you can do, as, as I described earlier, where imagine if you were to put this bone and this bone under traction, sort of pull them apart um, with a manipulation, then it creates a, almost like a vacuum effect, sucking this ba uh, disc back in and freeing up the nerves. It tends to work when the disc itself is quite soft and still quite mobile in that relatively um, acute setting. As a disc wears out more chronically and then thins out with time, it tends to be less effective. Now, some people use the term disc decompression or spinal decompression 
just to simply describe what happens when a disc has thinned out. It's not compressing any nerves necessarily, but patients might have back pain. And then they apply these treatments I've described to try and just create some more height between these two bones here and more disc height. And they call that decompression. The trouble with that is, is that it's quite normal to see a thinned out disc in patients, again, who don't really have uh, back pain. So therefore trying to predict or say that that's the cause of their back pain is quite tricky. And that's a scenario where I'm not always convinced that treatment works. That's why I think it is important to have a scan, have your scan looked at and have your case assessed by um, an expert that works in a team. So say a surgeon and your therapist working together, going over the images together and then deciding what treatment will suit you best. If you found this video helpful, if so, please click like and subscribe to the channel and please visit us at spinemdt.com to see how we can help you. Mm -hmm.